and let's do it. Let me change my screen. Okay. So this is the other type of cell division. And it produces, I'm going to come up here, and I'm going to say that meiosis is, oh, I didn't put lines on this page. If you want lines, remember to go to view and rule lines and choose the thickness that you want. I'm going to do no lines today. I'm just feeling like I don't want to be confined to some lines. All right. So meiosis is cell division. that results in four unique daughter cells each with one half of the original cells DNA. So the point of meiosis is to create cells that have only half of the genetic material of the parent because the type of cells that meiosis produces are gametes. Gametes is a fancy way to say that they're the cells involved in reproduction. So for males, that's sperm cells. And for females, that's egg cells. Either way, both sperm and egg cells only have half of the genetic material of the parent. So only have one half of the parents. DNA, which is equal to 23 chromosomes. Remember that normal cells have 46 chromosomes. But the point of this having half is that the sperm and the egg are eventually going to combine together. And you want the combination of the sperm and the egg to equal 46 chromosomes because that's what a human needs to have. So that's the reason why they have half. And it's really important that they end up with exactly half and not any more or any less. And we'll talk about that later on. Not today though. Okay. Now, before we keep going with this, I need to talk about a few more chromosome vocab words that we haven't talked about yet. So remember that like before Christmas, we did chromosome vocab words that were like chromosome and chromatin and um, centromere and those words. I'm gonna add three more words to that list of chromosome vocab. The first one is diploid. Diploid describes a cell that has two copies of each chromosome. So a cell that has two copies of each chromosome. And in humans, this is your, the normal condition. So human body cells are diploid. We call body cells somatic. So like gametes is the fancy word for reproductive cells. Somatic is the fancy word for body cells. And they have, we've talked about this a bunch of times, but 23 pairs of chromosomes where they have one copy of each chromosome from the mom and one copy of each chromosome from the dad. Here's a picture that I drew that represents that. So these chromosomes are the same, which means that they have the same genes in the same locations. So let's say the gray lines are meant to represent genes. So on this 
I'm going to say just like this little one might be eye color. It would be the same on the mom's chromosome. And then maybe this one is a height gene. It would be the same on the moms. So they're the same chromosome, but they're different um, versions of the chromosome because one came from the mom and one came from the dad. There can be different versions of the traits on the moms versus the dad. So for example, the mom's eye color gene might be blue eyes and the dad's eye color gene might be brown eyes, but it's still eye color in both ways. Because these chromosomes have the same genes in the same locations, we have a special word for them, which is homologous. That's the second vocab word. So these are homologous chromosomes. And in words, what that means is that they are chromosomes that are the same size and have the same genes. And you have 23 homologous pairs in each of your body cells. And they're numbered. So like this might be chromosome pair number seven. The two number sevens are homologous to each other. Okay, so now we have to do the other last vocab word which is haploid. So you probably can guess that a haploid cell is a cell that has one copy of each chromosome. And the only cells in humans that are haploid are gametes human reproductive cells are called gametes and they have 23 individual chromosomes. So remember also that unless it's after DNA replicates, the chromosomes are not X-shaped. So in a normal cell that's like just doing normal things, they would be single lines. That would be a homologous pair. And then a single line there, that would be um, one. Each sperm and egg will have a mixture of some chromosomes that came from the mom's side and some chromosomes that came from the dad's side which is how you get siblings that look different from each other from the same parent. Because maybe you got chromosome one from your mom, but your brother got chromosome one from your dad. So you have slightly different traits because every time it's random. Okay, any questions so far? Are you guys doing good? Awesome. Okay, so now the process of taking a diploid cell and creating a haploid gamete is called meiosis. So we're going to come down here and we're going to go through the steps. I put this on here that meiosis makes four haploid gametes from one diploid stem cell. So the cell that you start out with is always going to be diploid because it's from a human. Meiosis is going to split that cell two times to create four cells and each of the resulting cells will be haploid which means it has one copy of each chromosome. And now we're gonna talk through the phases. So you'll see here right off the bat that it's a little bit different from mitosis because you have meiosis one and meiosis two. And that's because you're gonna make four cells. So if you split something one time, you're gonna make two cells. And if you split something two times, you're gonna make four cells. Think about a pizza where you're cutting it one time, that's gonna make two halves. 
And then if you cut it again, that's going to make four quarters. That's what we want is to have four cells at the end. So each of the um, divisions is labeled meiosis one and meiosis two. The good news is that the phase names are the same as they were for mitosis, which is nice. Um, Sophia, I'm sorry that that's happening to you. It's okay. This is also being recorded, so you'll be able to watch it later if you miss anything. Okay, so we're going to start at the beginning with meiosis one, and we're going to start in prophase one. Of course, before this, interphase would have happened. I put that up there. During interphase, it's the same as mitosis, where the cell copies its DNA, does the checkpoints, make sure everything's good, and then it's like, okay, we can start doing um, meiosis now. So in prophase one, what happens, I drew these also this time as um, rectangular cells because you guys are gonna do a lab next week where the cells are gonna be rectangles. So I just wanted to like kind of prepare you for that. All right, so in prophase one, what happens is homologous chromosomes pair up. So that means your chromosome number one from your mom and your chromosome number one from your dad are going to find each other and they're going to be next to each other. Sometimes homologous chromosomes are called homologs, so don't be surprised if you see that. It's just the same thing. It's just a different way to say it. The other thing that happens in prophase one, which is really cool, is called crossing over. So crossing over. occurs. This is the only time that this happens, but what you get is two homologous pairs are next to each other. They cross over one of their chromatids or both. And what happens when they uncross is the genes actually trade places. So what you end up with is a chromosome from your dad that has some genes from your mom and a chromosome from your mom that has some genes from your dad. And so it creates a new genetic variation that didn't exist before. Because when you inherit that from your parents, you could get a chromosome from your dad, or your, I'm sorry, your grandfather, that has like some pieces of the chromosome from your grandmother. And maybe your siblings don't get that, but you do. So it creates this whole new genetic variation experience that's actually really beneficial and good because we want genetic variation in the population. We want diversity because it protects from like having some sort of disease come and wipe everyone out. Genetic diversity is really important. So those are the things that happen during prophase one. Pairing up of the homologous chromosomes and crossing over occurs. You also have centrioles, remember them from last time, that move to opposite sides of the cell. I didn't draw them in this picture, but they're gonna be in your simulation. Okay, then after that, it's time to go to metaphase one. So we'll come down here. Metaphase one looks a little bit different than metaphase of mitosis, because in mitosis, the chromosomes are in a single file line, and in meiosis one, they're in a double line. So chromosomes line up in double file with their homologous pair. Okay. Just like in mitosis, spindle fibers attach at the centromere of each chromosome. And that's what you got. So you have one cell with chromosomes in double file down the middle. Now, one thing to pay attention to is that the chromosomes don't have to line up in number order. They are in random order every single time. I'm going to say order of chromosomes is random. 
So in this one, we had four chromosomes from dad on the left and four chromosomes from mom on the right. You could have any combination. So you could have all the chromosomes from dad on the left and all the chromosomes from mom on the right. You could have any sort of mixture of that. It's totally random every single time this happens, which is again, how you get so much genetic diversity between family members because every time it's totally random and every sperm and egg will be different from the others. All right, once that happens, you can move to anaphase. So anaphase one, what happens here is the spindle fibers start to shorten. So spindle fibers shorten each X-shaped chromosome moves to opposite ends of the cell. So what you're getting is homologous pairs separating here. Pairs separate. And that's anaphase one. Then you can move to telophase one, which is the end of meiosis one. I combined it with cytokinesis because they both happen so fast, just like I said in mitosis. So what you end up with here is two cells each cell has seven, or in the case of humans, 23 X-shaped chromosomes. So I'm gonna say two cells form. Each cell has 23, I'm gonna say this as humans, X-shaped chromosomes. But remember that each half of the X is a chromatid and each of those chromatids are identical to one another. They're copies. So what this is, is actually 46 chromatids, which if I pulled those chromatids apart would be individual chromosomes. So this has done one division, but it still isn't haploid because it doesn't have 23 single chromosomes. So you have to divide again to pull those chromatids apart from one another. And that's what meiosis two is for. Already, you can see that the two cells in um, this picture are different from each other. They're not identical like they would be in mitosis because the chromosomes are mixed up. So some chromosomes are from mom and some chromosomes from dad are from dad. So already this is not perfect copies of these cells. Okay, now let us go to meiosis two. So I'm gonna come up to the top. All right, so in meiosis two, an easy way to remember this is that the diagrams will always have two cells in them. So that's a helpful hint. Prophase two of meiosis looks really similar to telophase two. So I didn't put a picture. I'm just gonna say looks very similar to telophase two. It's basically just two cells um, with 23 X-shaped chromosomes. And one thing that's really important for me to mention is that no crossing over happens here. Crossing over only happens in prophase one. When you think about it, it can't happen here because the homologous chromosome is not even there anymore. It's in the other cell. 
So there's no way that crossing over could happen, but I'm putting it on there anyways, just in case you forget that it can't happen in prophase two, it only happens in prophase one. Um, did you mean telephase one? Yes, sorry, thank you. Telephase one. Basically, it's just a continuation of the step prior. Now it's time for metaphase two. Metaphase two looks really similar to metaphase of mitosis, except for it's happening in two cells at the same time. So in this one, chromosomes line up in single file line attached to spindle fibers. So I'm gonna put these next to each other so you can see the difference. So you can see in metaphase one, there was that double file line where each X was attached to a spindle. In metaphase two, it's a single file line where each chromatid is attached to a spindle. So each side of the X. And then of course, this is happening in both cells. So it's happening in two cells instead of it in just one. Then for anaphase two, it's just like anaphase of mitosis, the sister chromatids. Pull apart in both cells. The spindle fibers are shortening. And then finally, for telophase and cytokinesis two, each of those two cells splits in half again. So what you're left with is four cells. Each one has 23 individual chromosomes. And each cell is unique. So on this one, I colored in the ends of the different chromatids, different colors to show that crossing over happened. They would have been that way through the entire process, but it was just a lot to color them in that way. Um, and I didn't want to overcomplicate the drawing. So um, you can see crossing over happened in the cells to make each one completely unique and different. And then one of these cells would combine with a cell from the other parent, a sperm or an egg, to create a new unique human. And that is the end of meiosis. Um, can you go back? Sorry, can you go back to um, metaphase two? Yes. I mean, prophase two, sorry. Yes. Does anyone have any questions right now? Oops, sorry. Okay, cool. Great. All right, so in just a minute, I'm going to scroll down on my page to show the other thing that you guys are going to do today. I'm going to have you leave Zoom to do it. Unless you really want to stay, but I feel like you probably don't. <laughs> Caitlin, tell me when you're good. Oh, I'm good. Okay. All right, so down here on the bottom of your page, there's a link to a gizmo. I'm going to click the link in just a second. Um, you're going to open meiosis and go through the steps. It's going to let you make a female sperm and a female, or sorry, <laughs> a female egg and a male sperm um, through the process of meiosis. Then after you do that, come back to OneNote and write what differences you noticed between those processes, because it actually is slightly different for females versus males, the process of meiosis. And you'll see that in the thing. Then there's another tab, you're gonna click experiment and make some flies, some baby flies using meiosis. Then there's five assessment questions. So I'm gonna go there now and show you. 
The assessment questions are all multiple choice. When you click the link, it's going to take you to your gizmo page. You're going to have to log in with your regular gizmo stuff. And then in third period, you're going to see a thing called meiosis. Click it. Click launch. It's going to look like this. So you can choose what you want to do first, male or female. It will guide you through the steps to do meiosis. So you just click on the things. Up at the top, it tells you which phase you're in at the time. Um, if you want to see, so I have to get to the next. Um, so I'm condensing my chromosomes right now. Um, this thing, the allele map, what this does is if you click a chromosome and drag it over here, it will show you the genes that are on the chromosome. And that will be important for like looking at the flies, but each of the genes is a letter. If they're lowercase, they're recessive, which means they don't always show. And if they're uppercase, it means they're dominant, which means they do show. Once you finish this, you're gonna go up here to experiment. And you can do the free explore first. This shows the different genes. You can click on them to do crossing over. And then you can click divide. It will do meiosis for you. These are the gametes, the sperm and the egg. And then you randomly choose like, okay, I'm gonna choose this one. I'm gonna choose this one. And then it will make you a baby fly. When you click show phenotype, that means show how it looks. So you click it and you're like, oh, look at my fly. It tells you over here, which genes stand for which things. Again, if it's dominant, it will show up no matter what. If it's recessive, it will only show up if there's two lowercase letters. So for example, this one has no recessive traits because there's a capital letter of all of them. Once you've played around with it, you can do challenge and you can try to make flies that are specific things like designer flies, basically. So you'll need to figure out a way to get your gamete to have these two letters. So you want your gamete to have two little C's, two little B's, two little L's, and one big R and one small R. And then see if you can create the fly. And then you can reset when you're ready. Um, it's just basically for you to mess around and kind of learn the steps of meiosis through the demonstration. It's really no big deal. Um, you should be able to finish it before class ends. We have 45 minutes, so plenty of time. Um, that's it for today. So you're welcome to leave Zoom and work on this. It's the only thing you do. Um, there's no homework unless for some reason you don't finish going through the simulation, but I think you will. Have a great weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, guys. Thank you. Thank Bye. You. Where's the link at again? It's on OneNote. It's at the bottom of the notes. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah, this fair one. Um, is the gizmo due at the end of class? Um, I don't have like a due date for it. Okay. It's before next class. Okay. Thank you.